Today I want to talk about um, generics and how you can create your own generic interfaces and your own generic functions. Um, in my previous video I covered array map and array reduce and how you can pass in a type that you expect to get back. When you do a map um, you can get basically any type of type back um, but it's always going to be an array of types. So in this case we want to, I want to convert these numbers into strings and so I can specify string over here and if I do dot to string, TypeScript doesn't complain and lets us know that everything's fine. If we don't specify that, we'll get an error that says that number is not assignable to type string. And so that's kind of the cool thing about using um, generics is that you can have a stricter type safety around these kinds of situations. Um, and type hinting, I think, is the more uh, powerful part for the developer. I mean, I like compiler errors. They're good. Um, but you know, it's also nice to have autocomplete that makes sense. So let's create an interface called model, and this is going to be a generic key value model. Um, imagine that it has a number, and a value is always going to be a, um, and it's going to have an ID with a number, and the value is always going to be any in this case. That work, works well until you try to do something like get users, um, get user, and you pass in an ID, and you want to return something, and you're going to say that it's going to be a model, but a user in our case was always going to have a value of let's say string because that's going to be the username for for example so this is not going to really work out for us I mean if we do return something like this it's not going to make any sense to us because oh, oops, um, because in our case we might want to have that string there so what we can do is make this model more generic and allow us to substitute any type for that value um, generics work a little bit like functions in my mind in that you can pass in arguments instead of um, regular parentheses you use angle brackets to pass in arguments and it's a type variable um, we're already getting a little thing from TypeScript letting us know we're not using it anywhere and um, as a type variable we can use it instead of any type anywhere in the in that code so here we can just pass it in here as if it was a type of its own and over here TypeScript already lets us know that it's a generic type and it requires that argument to be there so in our case we want that to be a string and we immediately get an error that the value is not what we expect it to be. So the next thing we want to do is create generic functions and see what that might look like. Or actually, why don't we go ahead and create another interface that I use very often, and it's an interface for a dictionary. Um, a dictionary, in my mind, is, uh, is a variable type, or rather would have the interface of um, having a key that's always a string and having a uh, having any key that's a string and having a value that's going to be of that type t so if we do this um, and we pass in t now we can create a dictionary and type it exactly how we want how it should look like um, a good example for this is let's say you have an array of users right um, that has an ID of three, name is uh, Mary, uh, ID of one, and uh, whoops, let's create a second object for that. Uh, we'll have an ID of one, and we have a name of John. And this works great. If we want to create a dictionary of those, uh, we might use something like Lodash's group by. I'm not going to import it, so we're not going to be using it. This is just for uh, example, but we might use something like this. Right, so Lodash's group by will basically create a structure. Uh, it's going to be an object whose structure is basically this. So then you can have really quick lookups by that ID. And notice that the that the key is going to be a string. I don't have to type this in JavaScript. That was just trying to be a little bit more explicit about it. I don't want to write our own group by, so I'm not going to do that. But the interface that satisfies this, not user dictionary, would be dictionary with the type user. And let's create an interface for users. And we're not going to make this one generic because we know that a user is always going to have an ID that's a number and a name that's a string. And you can see that TypeScript is not giving us any errors. And we it's already going to know that if we do any kind of lookup, let's say 1, it'll have an ID of a number, 
and a name of a string. And so that's kind of the cool thing about having generics, is having this generic interface for uh, dictionaries. And here, just for um, com completion's sake, we can declare the type to be a user array. And that's so that's that's a pretty powerful thing that you can do in JavaScript, uh, in TypeScript rather, uh, with generics. One more generic, uh, one more section of the generics that I want to cover is generic functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that fetches, and I'm going to actually leave the user interface here because it makes sense to me. Uh, we're going to create a function that fetches any kind of resource from our API. I'm going to make an async just so it's a little bit easier to read. Having these kinds of functions in your code is actually pretty common. I've found myself writing code like this over and over again, or uh, using libraries that wrapped fetch in a very similar way. So if you use, for example, Angular, you might you be using the HTTP client, and you'll see that it actually looks very similar to what you, ex what you would expect. So here we have response.json, and we're going to run a return to JSON. The problem right now is that no matter what the, the, the model type is, let's say we pass in a user, We can't tell anything about the user. It's going to be just declared as or inferred as a type any because the TypeScript cannot read the server. It cannot read your mind. It doesn't know what kind of type is going to come back from the um, from the server. So what we can actually do here is make this generic. And there are various different ways of returning that t. So we're going to actually try this one, which I haven't tried before. And just for completion's sake, we're going to say that the model type is always going to be a string. And you can see here that even though, um, uh, yeah, that's actually going to be incorrect. Here. There we go. So we're going to actually cast the JSON as type T. Whoops, we I forgot an await here. There we go. So that works. Let's go back, and we're going to do a return. A little bit of live coding. T. We're just going to go ahead and keep this as T. It's always going to be, uh, we're always going to be returning a promise from get resource because that's how async await works. But what we can do is actually cast the response as a T. And so in this case, TypeScript is not giving us an error yet, which is very surprising. Oh, it looks like it just infers that it's going to be an any. Uh, but we can go ahead and pass in a T, and that T can be a user. And when we do that, we'll know immediately that if we try to do a map on it, we're going to make sure that's a T array. If we do a map on it, the user dot, it already lets us know that it has an ID and a name of string. And you'll see a get resource type function, a function that works just like this, um, pretty much in any framework, in any place that uses TypeScript. Because um, when you're fetching something from an API, you really do want to ensure that you can pass in the expected type and then work off of that. And if you're not getting that expected response, I mean, you're obviously going to get a runtime error. Um, I mean, that's, those are the limitations of TypeScript. But this is a generic interface that I think is really important, really, really good to learn. Um, in this case, uh, TypeScript kind of figures out that even though you are returning promise, meaning that you do have to dump, do a dot then on it, and this is where I kind of got a little bit lost there, um, you want that final type well, after you run dot then on it to be that array of T. An array of T in this case is an array of users. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the cool power of TypeScript. I hope you enjoy using interfaces. I think they're powerful. Or not interfaces, generics. I think they're powerful. I think they're a feature that a lot of TypeScript users don't use because generics sounds very scary, even though it's not scary at all.